Hi boys and girls, welcome to a new IB physics video. In this video, we will show you how to do the question in your textbook on projectile motion. Before we start, let's make sure we have met the prerequisite of projectile motion. There are two. The first one is about the factor decomposition. The most common factor you see, of course, is the velocity v in this chapter. What you're going to do is to decompose them into two components, the horizontal and the vertical component. For the horizontal one, you want to do, if you are given with the angle theta, then the horizontal one will be equal to Vx, which is V cosine theta. While for the vertical one, very similarly, Vy will be equal to V sine theta. A one for kinematic equation, which you have learned in the previous lessons, I'll give you a few seconds to think about which four of the equations they are. Here we go. There are four kinematic equations. Let's move on. So first of all, uh, after looking at the question, you can draw this diagram roughly. This helps you to understand the situation. After that, you should write down all the information you know. Here you want to find the time first because uh, this helps you to de determine how long the uh, motion would be. And therefore, the most suitable equation should be using this one x equal ut plus 1 over 280 squared. And then you find the time of flight, which is very important. And you move on looking at the horizontal movement. Just now we were looking at the um, vertical one. And for horizontal one, these are the information you know. And now you know the time is equal to 0 0.516 seconds. And therefore, you can apply to the equation similarly. And you can find the horizontal movement, which will be 1 meter. Okay, next question. Uh, basically, you can see that uh, the question can be transformed into a diagram like this. And again, you consider the vertical motion. And using this equation, you should be able to find the time for 4 meter and x meter of the objects or well, particles separately. And therefore, since the, their horizontal movement, uh, horizontal motion are having the same speed, which is 4 meter per second, and therefore, you can find the separation distance by, well, just calculating the horizontal displacement directly. Uh, and then just divide, minus them together. And therefore, you should be able to find 1.5 meter to be the separation distance. Okay, for part B. So basically, what you do is uh, you change the situation. And it now tell you that if you can change the 4 meter ball, with another unknown velocity, initial velocity, uh, still horizontal one, then you can still, you can be able to hit the same spot as the 8 meter one at the same spot here. And therefore, at the first place, you want to know um, the displacement horizontally, how long it is by looking at the 8 meter one. From the part A, you can find that using the horizontal velocity and the time flight for 8 meter one, you can find the horizontal displacement, which will be 5.108 meter. And the time flight for 4 meter one is still the same because the initial vertical velocity and the vertical displacement is still 4 meter. Therefore, the time of flight should not be changing. It's still 0 0.9 second. By using that, basically, you can use the equation here, and therefore, you can find the initial horizontal velocity has to be 5.7 meter per second. OK, next question. Uh, again, you draw the diagram, and quickly, you can see that uh, for horizontal movement and vertical uh, velocity, it will be using cosine and sine respectively. And for the graph, let me show you the answer first. For uh, the horizontal velocity against time, of course, it would not be changing. If you can look at this, it would not be changing because um, there is no air resistance and 
you know that there is no acceleration affecting on the horizontal movement. For the vertical one, you can see that it will be a straight line uh, which has a negative gradient and obviously the gradient that means the slope will be equal to 9.81 uh, negative because due to the um, gravity, acceleration due to gravity. And for the acceleration, it will be basically 9 point, negative 9.81. Uh, here, of course, the graph looks like negative 10, and it should be a constant all the time. Again, assume there's no air resistance. Next question is rather easy. Again, let's draw a diagram. This is how the diagram looks like. The red one, red line represent the basically the path that it looks like. So if you want to find the highest point, Remember, for the vertical velocity at the highest point, it must be having zero uh, vertical component of velocity. And remember, for acceleration, it's always negative 9.81 if we take the upward as positive. And therefore, by using the equation, you should be able to find directly how long the vertical displacement would be. The next one is again pretty easy. Uh, again, you draw a diagram first, and these are the uh, decomposition of the vector. Again, one is cosine, one is sine, and let me show you the answer. For the horizontal position, you can see that uh, it follows with a strict and constant gradient, and of course, the, the slope here represent will be the velocity of x which is a constant and which is direct, say 20 cosine 50 degree. And for y, initially the gradient of course should be 20 sine 50. However, however, because of the acceleration, they will change over time. And for plotting that graph, actually you need more calculation, but I will skip here. And you can you should be able to find out that at the time where the vertical velocity is zero, it will be 1.5. And this is the most important time you want to calculate. And therefore, the graph after that will look symmetrical. So um, that's the property of projectile. For question 30, it's a very typical physics um, story to tell. And I'm sure I have already told you in the class. You can actually click into this link uh, and see the MIT physics demo again, or you just basically search monkey and a gun on YouTube, and I can, I'm pretty sure there are lots of videos to see. Uh, but most importantly, I want you to think about in order to let the monkey to be hit by the bullet, there are three assumptions. Let's think about it, and I will show the answer later on. Okay, so the first one is there is no air resistance. As you know, if there are air resistance, uh, and of course the bullets and the monkey will have different air resistance and different mass, of course. And therefore, the path would not be that ideal, and they probably would not be heated in the motion. The second one is uh, the gun has to be aiming at the monkey at a straight line before it is shoot out. And uh, the third one is there's no time delay, and the initial speed for the monkey when it releases its hand is also zero, so that uh, it follows the perfect path. Uh, and also the, for the vertical movement for both of them is actually the same in that case. Okay, for our next question, it's a bit tricky. Um, in the graph, it asks you to determine the initial velocity of the ball for different components, I mean the vertical and the horizontal one. Uh, so I will choose looking at this point because for this point is the, it's probably the easiest point to be referred to in the graph. And you can see that for the horizontal displacement is 30 meter. And you know the time is the fifth interval. And therefore, the uh, 
time is spent to reach this point will be one second and using 0 0.2 second times 5 will be one second and therefore it just 30 over 1 for horizontal speed and therefore you'll find 30 meter per second for a vertical one is uh, a bit tricky what you're gonna do is you, you want to find uh, the using the equation of this uh, by this unknown uh, so you know that at this is obviously the highest point and therefore the velocity of y component here that means vertical component here must be zero and and now you want to find the initial vertical velocity and you know the vertical displacement is 10 and the time is 1 therefore you can apply this equation basically what it does is to assume uh, the acceleration to be a constant and this is the, basically the average velocity and multiply by the time you will find the uh, vertical displacement the reason why we can't use uh, the other equation is because if you look at the question very very carefully you can see that it is saying a planet that means it's not the earth of course and or I may say you cannot assume it is the earth and therefore you, you don't actually know that whether or not a is equal to 10 or 9.81 you don't actually know so you can't assume that and of course uh, from question part a3 you can see that the it actually acceleration then of course is it's not uh, uh, the same as the earth and therefore by using this method eventually you find out uh, the vertical component for the initial velocity is 20 meter per second be very careful that I think some of you may may want to look into the first point instead or some other point instead uh, that would not be very simple for you and you may fall into the trap set up by the question because if you look at this point you may want to say ah uh, the uh, vertical displacement here oops here is about uh, 3.6 meters and since it's just one interval so the time is 0 0.2 and therefore by using the normal very simple um, displacement over time equation you'll find the velocity will be 18 meter per second for the vertical component this is of course completely wrong because uh, one thing is it contradicts with our answer and also the reason is 18 meter per second here is actually talking about the average velocity between 0 second and 0 0.2 second so it's not really the velocity at this point at the 0 0.2 second or at the beginning it's just at the middle which is um, not very meaningful for you and therefore you should not use uh, this way to find out your answer so next part is finding the angle uh, for the ball when it's launched so again uh, you look at from part A you can find the different component vertical and horizontal one you rearrange that so that it looks like this probably easier for you to read and eventually you use the tangent theta to find out um, the angle to the horizontal and for the last part finding the acceleration again you want to apply the equation now you know uh, at this point at the fifth point that the uh, final velocity is zero at that uh, moment and initial velocity for uh, the vertical one is 20 and you want to know um, acceleration the time you spend from beginning to this point is one second and therefore you apply to, to this equation now you can find the answer will be negative 20 meter per second for part b and c i think is rather self-explanatory uh, for b obviously velocity is horizontal and for the uh, acceleration it will be uh, the vertical pointing downward and for part c the maximum height will be half as before and also the range uh, horizontal range will be half as before as well as you can see uh, the 0 0.5 second point should actually be around here and since the interval for you know the photograph is just 0 0.2 second therefore this point should be missed and it still look uh, very symmetrical in the sense uh, in, the, in terms of these assets
So the first one I want to show you is without air resistance, with certain speed and set up like your question, you see the blue curve showing how it looks like in a in a parabola shape. And if I set the air resistance, say I give it a little drag first, and you will see the path is of course shorter because of time. And if I set it even higher, then of course it's even shorter. And you can see that the angle when you reach the grind is also greater as well. Okay, so for the last one is rather uh, simple and typical, especially if you have gone through IGCSE physics, you should know that. And uh, the first one is about terminal velocity. And you should know that is when the object are falling and the weight is compensated by the air resistance in the same amount. And therefore, the net force in other words, should be zero. And since F equal M A, and if the force is zero, then the uh, acceleration will also be zero, and that's maintain the velocity, and therefore it's called terminal velocity. Um, I think one point that I want to emphasize even more is about the air resistance. There are actually two factors. Once again, if you forgot what you learned from RGCSE, the first one is about the uh, velocity at that moment and therefore initially the air resistance is zero and once it starts to fall down the air resistance would develop. The second one is about uh, more about how the shape of the object is. So say with uh, two same paper, A4 white paper, when they fall if you crumble one of, the, one of the paper the shape are different and therefore they have different air resistance and different time arriving the ground. Thanks for watching and that's the end of the video. At last I want to recommend you, if you have time, try to go get Angry Bird Classic and Angry Bird Space to play around and have a feeling of how projectile looks like and maybe also how in the space with the gravitational field as well. Have a good day.